government expand at a rate that would make bacteria jealous, especially when you consider that those pulling the strings and voting to bring these frameworks to fruition are all career politicians, all of which I might add are multimillionaires. I say return Congress to what it was originally intended to be, workaday individuals selected as speakers and representatives of their communities and districts, where said districts bestowed upon them the honor of being sent to Washington to voice the collective will during an annual 90-day session. If it didn't get done in 90 days, it got tabled for the year. In two words, fire Congress. I'm angry when I watch our tax dollars in the form of stimulus we did not want and protest would be doled out to huge mismanaged and international entities. Mr. Obama, if you want to stimulate more than certain reporters' legs, I say send that money to the small business owners. They're the ones hit hardest by these challenging times. They're the ones forced to cut back services in their workforce. They have the greatest growth potential, and they have the greatest hiring potential. In short, they're going to be our saviors that pull us out of this. I've got to say, too, that I'm scared. No. No, that's not strong enough. I'm not scared. I'm terrified. I am terrified, and I can tell you why after this is done. I am terrified of these clowns pushing through this medical agenda. That has nothing to do about health care. It has to do with control. But you know what? There's a lesson my mother taught me at a very early age, and that is that there are no substantive retorts or replacements for common sense and reality. I was a hard-headed student, by the way, so it took her 18 years to teach me that. Mr. Obama, if you truly want to solve the health care problem and bring down costs while increasing quality, and you truly want to do this by encouraging competition in the market, then put aside your hatred for insurance companies. Put aside your agenda. Sit down. Stop talking and listen to what America has been telling you. Get rid of interstate commerce restrictions. You want competition? There's your competition. What part of tort reform don't you understand? You're a law professor, for the love of God. And finally, if we must have socialist programs, and that's fine to a degree, let's keep them honest. Fix Medicare, fix Medicaid, fix Social Security. You do that, and everything else becomes irrelevant. Stop this rape of the American public by forcing the holy grail of liberalism down our throats. We won't be grateful. Our next generation won't be raining accolades down upon you in a song on Obama Day. We won't be prostrating before you in shameless servitude. When government no longer recognizes its position as representatives of the people, sent by the people, working for the people, that it becomes a cesspool of greed and power-hungry hypocrisy and desperate need of draining, sterilization, and reclamation. Our government is now a bloated model of inefficiency and bureaucracy and a swamp of corruption and spending that must be drained and dried so we might plant the seeds of proven and effective ideas in the fertile soils that remain. Soils that remain rich by the promise of we the people turning under those entities that sprout force, voting, writing, or otherwise espousing anything with less than their constituents interest at heart. We start now. We are the pumps. We are the clouds. We ourselves are to blame for the unconscionable character of our federal, state, and local government officials, and only we can empower ourselves to clean these houses. So yes, I'm angry. I'm scared. I'm saddened. I'm also inspired by all the now disenfranchised I witness on the street and hear in conversation, each asking a very simple question. Why isn't somebody doing something? Look around you. Look around you. This is the change we thought we were voting for, and we're the ones making it happen. Give yourselves a huge round. You are my heroes. As we empower and elevate ourselves above this maelstrom of discontent and darkness, I see clearly that critical mass has been achieved. Critical mass has been achieved and we will not be relegated to the dusty and dimly lit museum halls of retired ideals and irrelevance. We will not be led like sheep through a left or right wing gates of ideolo ideological slaughterhouse, bludgeoned and silenced by their defamations and tactics. We will not be labeled dissenters for holding dear the principles that make this the greatest nation on earth. Do we reject their efforts to commit upon us these violations? No. 
No, we embrace them with gratitude, for they have, with great prejudice, brought to the center of our, con of our consciousness the consequences of political complacency and united us around the single cause of saving our country and values. We will not reject them. Rather, we rise in celebration for our love of America, our collective voice raised, unified, ringing out like a perfect pitch of a fine bell to stay the beasts in Washington and demand back those rights and liberties our grandparents, our parents, our sons, and our daughters have fought and died to preserve and protect. So the question becomes, the real question becomes this. Who among you is serious about resurrecting our paradigm and shining proudly the brilliant light seen the world over that is the American way of life? Let me hear you. I ask this because the seeds of despotism, despotism have been long planted and tended, and those that would benefit from this pillaging of liberty are now salivating like Pavlov's dogs, feeling their dreams have come to, to fruition. And to counter that, we patriots attend duty. Functions like this, we call our congressmen, we call the congressional board, we, we write, we do what we need to. But we must now do more, much, much more. For I fear our great republic now teeters precariously on the precipice of existence. America is waking up. You are waking up here today. So it is with great pride that I've addressed you, surveyed you, and bear witness to a growing collective that acts with a renewed sense of responsibility to the republic, to the community, to the family, and to yourselves. That being said, this is a call to action. Unleash your power. Feel your ancestors demanded. We cast off this darkness. Shine down that brilliant light, shredding and driving to the most remote corners the shadows of this tyranny. Rise up with power, with strength, and with honor. Stand up for the innocent. Stand up for the country. Stand up to these parasites. All these lesser men bind themselves together as hordes and endeavor to pull down the strong. Stand up to them and tell them they're not your gods. They're not your owners. They are not your kings. We have an absolute divine right as free creatures made in the image of the Creator to be and remain free. These people have their hands around the throat of the Republic and they are tightening their grip. Stand up. March on their offices. Force them to look into the eyes of the grassroots anger they have cultivated through action and ask hard questions. Corner them. Demand answers. Remind them that not only do they work for you, but they are to be held accountable. Remind them that they are mere men and women and that there are consequences for each and every action. Make this their judgment day. Stand up. Stand up and reclaim your birthright, your stake in that great and historic social experiment that is our blessed republic, the United States of America. Stand up. In closing, before I hyperventilate and pass out, <laughs> told you I was angry, damn <laughs> We need to return to a time of principle, of principle. When we believed in family and community and Judeo-Christian values regardless of what our religious belief system was. A time of hope and inspiration and aspiration, dreams and goals and audacity. Return to a time when, if one made a choice to function outside the acceptable social framework, there were stigma and they were frowned upon. That is a time when there was much, much more narrowly defined monoculture society. Not Anglo-American, not African-American, not Native American, not Asian American, just American! Yeah. Let's return to a day where the community works to inspire and lead one out of poverty, not just pity them and provide them handouts. We believe in teaching the fish, not giving fish. Yes, yes. We don't strive to bring the successful down. We endeavor to lift the unfortunate up. <laughs>